Hello there you guys, welcome to another My Life video. So this is your Manchester United uh, versus Christian Sun BK preview tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock kickoff in As Oslo, uh, which is uh, the capital um, of Norway. So I do believe Manchester United um, have named a 26-man squad uh, for uh, the trip to Oslo. Uh, Lukaku, of course, um, has not travelled there uh, with the Manchester United squad. Obviously, he's not yet, you know, made an appearance um, on pre-season uh, tour. Um, I do believe that Lee Grant has not yet made um, an appearance um, on tour, but he has uh, travelled, uh, you know, to um, Oslo with the rest of the Manchester United uh, squad. Um, also, Diamond um, has not currently uh, travelled because obviously now um, he's uh, served his uh, two requirements um, at Manchester United. So, these quite a few, you know, that haven't uh, currently uh, travelled. Um, I am aware that Fossil Mensu hasn't. Uh, of course, um, Alexis Sanchez um, and that uh, currently um, hasn't. So, obviously, we do know this is our fifth game now um, of pre season. Obviously, after this game uh, tomorrow evening, um, our last uh, pre season game is, is against uh, AC Milan, um, of course, um, in Cardiff. But we've had a fantastic start uh, so far, like I said, uh, two pre season, you know, uh, four wins um, out of four, uh, nine goals scored and um, only uh, one goal uh, conceded so potentially, yeah, we have done really really well and I think, you know, uh, the young players um, have really uh, stepped up to the plate, you know, I think you know, Mason Greenwood's done very, very well, you know he's scored two goals um, in pre-season so far and obviously, you know, Solskjaer has assured, you know, Mason Greenwood uh, more playing time uh, this season, so obviously he's going to get promoted um, into the first team, because Mason Greenwood's performances were good last season in the reserve team because he scored 30 goals in 29 um, appearances, um, so Mason Greenwood's been absolutely fantastic and of course um, he's uh, the upcoming uh, future um, I think Rashford's been fantastic so far um, in pre-season you know with Marcus Rashford um with Marcus Rashford, um, I think he's also scored two goals uh, so far in pre-season, you know, like uh, Mason Greenwood has. And with Marcus Rashford, you know, a very, very good player. Still um, is the upcoming future, um, is Marcus Rashford. I know he's been in the senior squad with Manchester United uh, since uh, 2016, but I still don't think he's emulated that level yet. It's going to take him maybe a year or maybe a couple of years, you know, to get into that level where he does uh, currently want to be. But he's been fantastic um, in pre-season. I know he was inconsistent in the last couple of months of last season, but he has started uh, pre-season really, really well. You know, I think also Marcus Shell's been absolutely fantastic as well. He's also scored two goals so far um, in pre-season. And with Anthony Martial, I think the club may orchestrate on, you know, putting playing Martial more centrally um, in the Premier League uh, this season. Because we have seen uh, in pre-season so far, Martial, you know, seems to be more effective um, in that uh, central uh, position. And, you know, he did really, really well um, in that position um, against uh, Tottenham um, in Shanghai. But, you know, you can play Martial centrally, you can play Martial out wide, and you can play Rashford centrally, and, of course, uh, you can play him um, out wide. But they are still both uh, very, very young, and they have got um, a lot of uh, years ahead of them. You know, we have seen glimpses so far of what good signings, you know, Daniel James and Wan Masaka have proven her to be because they've been fantastic so far um, in pre-season. You know, with Daniel James, I still say he's a prospect and he needs a uh, company uh, time uh, to develop. But of course, um, he has uh, got an um, electrifying uh, pace um, as uh, Daniel uh, James, but he's been absolutely fantastic uh, so far. And with Wan Masaka, you know, I think he's got all the ingredients required to become a huge success um, at Manchester United. And I do believe he can be our fullback uh, for the next uh, decade. But like I said, Daniel James and Wan Masaka have been um, absolutely uh, fantastic. But analysing you know the games in pre-season what we've played uh, so far I can see vast improvements in Manchester United because you know we do look better in the attack of the third um, of the pitch we do look uh, much better in the attack of the third um, of the pitch because there's more pace now and that's something was lacking last season you know was lacking that pace last season we might have created chances last season but you know wasn't scoring enough goals you know wasn't you know creative enough um, in the attack of the third um, of the pitch and wasn't ruthless enough um, in front of a goal but now we've got that pace in that attacking line and you've got you know uh, Daniel James with electrifying pace you know we've played him on the right a couple of times but he's supposed to be more effective from that left. You know, you got uh, Marshall with good pace, Rash with a fantastic pace. Um but yeah, I think we look much better in that attacking line. You've also got Chon. I don't think Chon uh, played um, against uh, Tottenham, um, if I'm right. No, he didn't uh, play um, against Tottenham, because I do believe in the Interman game, he'd currently uh, sustained um, a knock. But Chon's been very impressive uh, so far in pre-season. You know, he's also, you know, uh, the upcoming uh, future. Um, I think Angel Gomez, you know, has done uh, quite well. You know, he scored a fantastic goal um, in the game um, against Tottenham, which was um, obviously, you know, on the winner. So I think Angel Gomez has done pretty, pretty well. You know, Jimmy Garner did well in our first pre-season game against Perth Glory, you know, getting um, his name um, on the score sheet. I thought Alex Tuan Zebe has done pretty well. He did well um, in the Inter Milan game, you know, did uh, Alex uh, Tuan Zebe. So I think the majority of the young players um, have been um, absolutely uh, fantastic. I think some of the experience of players have been quite good. You know, I think Juan Matt has done okay. I think Nemanja Matic has been very, very disappointing uh, so far um, in pre season. But with Nemanja Matic, you know, you, you see he totally slows our midfield down. He's totally ineffective in that midfield. And it looks so imbalanced when Matic um, is playing um, in that midfield. But when you take Matic out of the equation, you know, our midfield, of course, uh, looks uh, so much better. But as you all know, anywhere, we do 
do need to um, add them a couple of uh, new um, additions um, in that uh, midfield. But um, like I said, we've had a fantastic uh, start uh, to pre-season. But you know, I like I said I like pre-season. I know it's meaningless, but you know it's you know it's beneficial. You know for the upcoming players because they do get a um, bit of a uh, more um, experience um, under their belt. But all the source guy, you know, we'll be analysing. You know who's playing well in in these games in pre-season, who's not playing so well. So it will give him an idea. It'll give him an idea of what team um, is going to go with um, against uh, Chelsea um, in the Premier League uh, this season. Because obviously, you know that's a uh, first game um, of. Uh the Premier League uh, season, but like I said, nine goals scored, um, only a uh, one goal uh, conceded, and uh, yeah, so we beat Perth Glory two 0 Leeds four 0 Inter Milan one 0 and of course uh, Tottenham two uh, one. And it was, you know, it was Tottenham's goal in that game. You know, was actually you know very uh, fortuitous. You know, it basically you know should have never happened. So basically, Tottenham's goal uh, was a uh, very very um, lucky. But um, like I said, I'm so um, impressed uh, so far. But um, like I said, I do believe we're going to have a better season this season anyway. I'm very convinced we're gonna. I'm still skeptical about us winning the league uh, this season. Uh, you know, it depends if we can get you know a couple of more players in you know before this uh, current uh, window uh, does shut because there's only just what um about is it around 10 or 11 days now remaining um this uh, transfer window and like i said if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, doesn't get all the players uh, that he wants you can say the board have let him down um you can say the board um, have let him uh, down and then you know we will we'll criticise uh, the board and we'll also criticise Ed Woodward and I'm very adamant that Ed Woodward has obviously you know, been recently you know, in the UK uh, to obviously um, our transfer business because Ed Woodward you know, wants to uh, get uh, some deals um, and that uh, completed but there is vast improvements in the squad and Solskjaer the other week was talking about our ambitions for this se ambitions for this season he believes we'll be aiming for further up than fourth uh, this season I initially said our expectations will be at least there to finish um, in that top four at least I did initially say our aspirations will be that top four in the next couple of seasons but I think this season we'll finish in the top four maybe in the top three but I am still I am still uh, sceptical about as uh, you know currently uh, winning their league but there will be definitely vast improvements from last season I should presume you know last season was a huge disappointment you know we finished six you know we didn't uh, win uh, many silver and you know we failed uh, to qualify for the Champions League but I'm convinced in the Premier League this season we you know we will get Champions League uh, qualification but I always said Champions League football is always a pivotal when you do when you get your number one targets when you do uh, want to convince uh, your imperative uh, players um, that uh, to stay at um, the football club I do believe we need to sell players to help us generate funds and rebuild uh, the squad like I said with the Harry Maguire news as I've been giving an update on we are ready to sign Harry Maguire and we're ready to pay that £80 million valuation what Leicester are demanding only if of course uh, we can uh, sell uh, Ramon Lukaku so obviously we're orchestrating on generating the fun funds from his departure then putting them of course um, on uh, Harry uh, Maguire but he will address our defensive deficiencies you know uh, fantastically uh, well but um, like I said you know we still uh, need to uh, revitalise uh, the squad but going back in March actually Oligan and Solskjaer's preference was to get uh, our transfer business completed by the time we did go on pre-season but obviously you know that didn't um, currently um, occur but Solskjaer you know he's given his analysis on this chance throughout this transfer winning so far and you know to be fair to Solskjaer I'll credit him in that aspect you know he hasn't become infuriated and all that he hasn't become frustrated with the lack of transfer activity he said you know we've got two good players on the board and you know basically I uh, need to be uh, currently uh, patient so fair play to him for saying that um but um yeah, so Christian Sun is tomorrow evening, uh, six o'clock uh, kickoff. It is in Oslo, which is obviously you know, the capital of Norway, which originally you know where um Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um is from. So we'll talk a little about uh, a little bit about uh, Christian uh, Sund. So I do believe that Christian Sund the BK were only founded in two thousand and three, which is actually which was actually around uh, fifteen uh, years ago now, or was it uh, sixteen uh, years ago? Now it didn't actually say that um uh, you know, uh, the two rival clubs, uh, Christian Sund um, FK at the time and uh, Klaus and Engen FK, um, you know, came together, you know, to um, establish um, a new team. So Christian uh, BK um, got founded uh, back um, in 2003. So they've been going for around uh, 15. It's nearly uh, 16 years now, um, I do uh, believe. Uh, Christian Sund um, haven't played, you know, since uh, their 5-2 uh, victory um, against Lil uh, Strom, uh, is it? Uh, that was uh, back on uh, the 5th um, of July. So obviously, you know, it was um, early on uh, this month. Um, um, and all that. It was uh, back um, on the uh, 5th um, of July. Um, I do believe this is the first Norwegian opposition, you know, we are going to be playing uh, since uh, 2017 because the last Nor Norwegian opposition we played was uh, Valerengi, you know, back in uh, 2017. I do believe, you know, won that game uh, by uh, three goals uh, to nil. I think it was goals from Mario Fellaini, uh, Scott Montominway, and I do believe uh, Romelu Lukaku. So that's the last time, you know, we've heard, um, a Norwegian um, opposition. Um, but Christian Sund, um, I do believe, you know, they got promoted to the top level um, of Norwegian football uh, back in uh, 2016. And reportedly, you know, they, I think uh, they finished seventh and fifth um, in their uh, two uh, campaigns um, in the top flight um, of Norwegian uh, football. I do believe out, out there midway uh, through uh, their season now, um, if I'm uh, currently uh, right. So there's a bit of information um, about uh, Christian uh, Sund. So don't forget, you know, they only got founded back in uh, 2003. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very convinced, you know, Manchester United, you know, should uh, currently uh, win this. And I think the majority 
obviously the people think, you know, Manchester United will win this. But like I said, Lukaku hasn't travelled with the rest of the squad. Neither has Diamond. Lee Grant has. Um, I don't think Fosso Menso has. Um, Sanchez, I think he's, he's still currently injured at the moment, Sanchez. But I do believe, you know, he will currently get his opportunity. Well, Sanchez, I don't know if he's injured now, but obviously, you know, he has, you know, currently, you know, been injured. Eric Bay, of course, you know, he isn't going to be featuring because obviously, you know, Eric Bay uh, came off um, injured um, in our 2 1 victory um, over Tottenham. He came off uh, with a serious uh, knee injury at um, uh, Eric uh, Bay. So obviously, you know, he's going to be a sideline sidelined did um but with Eric Bay, you know, I think he's got great potential. And I know how much of an imperative a player that Eric Bay is. But I think his Manchester United career has been mainly affected. You know, the amount of injuries sustained. Obviously, you know, with his uh, fallout um, under managers, it's had a really bad effect um, on Eric Bay's uh, career. And I think now, since Eric Bay has sustained this serious, you know, knee injury and he's a doubt for, the, you know, this season, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, has obviously now uh, wants to get the deal over the line for Harry Maguire as soon as possible. So he's actually, you know, instructed uh, Edward, you know, to uh, get um, a deal um, over the line. But um, like I said, I've been very impressed uh, with the young players so far um, in pre-season and everybody will get the chance under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer like everybody, most of the players have been given the chance so far throughout uh, pre-season but I do believe everyone will get the chance in the Premier League this season because when initially Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got appointed in anywhere on the 19th of December you know, following uh, Jose, uh, following the dismissal um, of Jose Mourinho he, he said he was going to give everybody the chance and he did give everybody the chance um, in the second half um, of last season you know, the fringe players the young players you know, the experienced uh, players uh, with Fred you know, I think he's also travelled you know, Fred has done well in his last two games, you know, when he has come on um, a substitute, like I said, I think that Tommy Way, you know, has done uh, really, really well. So I think, you know, overall, you know, we have uh, performed, you know, uh, really, really well and all that. Um but um yeah, I do believe you know Manchester United um, are gonna get the result um against uh Christine uh, Sun. So don't forget, I can't remember the name of the stadium, is it U Valley Stadium or something like that? But I know it's in Oslo, which is obviously you know, the capital um, of Norway, and of course it is um our fifth uh, pre season uh, game. Um but yeah, very, very convinced you know, that uh, Manchester United um, are currently you know, going to uh, win this. Um, but um, yeah, he'll probably do what he's been doing you know, so far in pre-season. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, will put an 11 out um, uh, in the first half and then obviously you know, he'll put a different 11 out um, in the second half because that's what he's been mainly be been doing um, in pre-season. You know, he didn't do that against Inter Milan. You know, he didn't rotate the whole 11 in the first half and then brought another 11 out in the second half You know, because he gave, against Inter Milan, I think he gave some players like what, uh, 60, 70 minutes as he did say he was going to do, which he did. Um, against Tottenham, I think um, he actually you know put an eleven out in the first half and brought a new eleven out, um, of course, in the second half. So that's what mainly you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, has currently uh, been uh, doing. And um, but like I said, you know we've got to do more transfer business. Um, it's very that's a uh, very very um, essential um, indeed. You know if we want to be back, you know to be um, a competitive um, elite uh, level of uh, football club. And Solskjaer, you know, was recently you know talking about um, our uh, recruitment uh, policy because in the last couple of windows, analysing our recruitment policy, it's been very very poor. You know we didn't obviously you know get anyone in January. You know we didn't get as a uh, number one uh, target. Uh, last summer, but we do know we have been playing catch up uh, for last uh, five um, or six years, and we have been a toxic club for the last uh, five um, or six years. But the main factor is why we have been a toxic club because obviously you now we've been mismanaged. They were being mismanaged. Uh, this is the main factor is why we have, of course, uh, been um, under them achieving. We've had different managers with different philosophies. Um, obviously, you know. Um, you know, since Ferguson's retirement, you know, three managers um, have been sat. So I hope Ole Gunnar Solskjaer can get Manchester United back to success because we haven't got the structure, you know, to uh, keep uh, sacking their managers. But I do believe he'll be able to elevate Manchester United, for, uh, Manchester United forward. You know, don't forget Ole Gunnar Solskjaer knows the club um, inside out. Um, he also managed the Manchester United reserve team for a couple of years. So he did watch his team this day and age, you know, grow um, and develop. You know, analysing at the moment, the majority of this squad is not Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You know, the only two players that are his as it stands at this present time is obviously you not know, Daniel James and Wan Bissaka. Solskjaer, you know, obviously, you know, to recommend a number of young players to come to uh, Manchester United uh, this summer, you know, that can grow, develop um, and emulate um, and superstars. And, you know, I do believe it did say we are moving away from the policy of signing all them well established players, you know, because uh, a few people said, you know, we should be sensible uh, with our uh, recruitment uh, this summer. Uh, but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, anyway, believes he's following um, a philosophy, you know, uh, that proved, uh, well, he's, he's following um, Alex Ferguson's philosophy and he's following a policy that proved uh, successful um, and that um, under um, Alex uh, Ferguson. You know, we're never going to achieve what we achieved under Alex Ferguson, you know, for 20 odd years of success. So no one's going to ever follow Alex Ferguson's uh, legacy, but I do believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, can get us back, you know, to being a competitive elite level football club, you know, get us back, you know, um, up there uh, challenging. But, you know, like I said, he's going to analyse, when pre-season then, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to analyse, you know, what plays he thought played well and what plays, what, what he thought, you know, didn't play uh, so well. But I think the majority of the players anyway have played really, really well. But, um, like I said, it'll give him an idea of what, you know, team he's going to go with um, in the game um, against Chelsea, which is obviously you now um, on uh, the, uh, the 11th um, of August. Um, he may have 
even go with a different formation this season. You know, he may go with um, the 4 3 3. Well, he actually, I think, went with the 4 3 3 last season. I think he's also gone with the 4 2 3 1 quite a few times, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, but he'll work that out, you know, when uh, you know when the Premier League uh, season, you know, does uh, kill the game start. But I hope we can have um, a better season this season uh, without um, a shadow with them of a doubt. But Solskjaer's aware of the speculation anyway. You know, as he said, there's been a lot of talk about players coming in and, you know, players are going out. And Solskjaer has spoken to the vast majority of, them of our uh, players uh, this summer. But, you know, um, like I said, I think, you know, with Lukaku not playing a game in pre-season, obviously, you know, that's that's fueled more speculation um, in regards uh, to Romelu Lukaku's L on to the future. Because I know he hasn't travelled with his squad uh, to uh, Oslo, so he's not going to be playing, obviously. But, um, obviously, you know, with the games, the other games he's been missing... Um, uh, Solskjaer's confirmed that you know Lukaku has been injured. He hasn't been fit enough to play. Allegedly, he said he had some type of uh, ankle uh, problem. Um, I think anyway. Like I said, Sanchez not yet made an appearance um, on tour. I think he's been injured as Sanchez. I'm sure he's been injured. Has he had uh, some kind of a uh, knee injury? Um, Dem Demetri Mitchell as well. He's another player um, who I haven't uh, heard on preseason. So I don't think he's played on free preseason tour because I do believe you know Dem Demetri Mitchell. Um, of course, as you know, being uh, currently um, injured and. Um, but um yeah I've been uh, very very impressed like I said uh, with preseason uh, so far. So as I did give you an update um earlier on um in regards to Bruno Fernandes uh, from Sport and Lisbon now it does it's looking very likely that Bruno Fernandes is going to be um, our third signing this summer. Now potentially we do know that we need to add reinforcements in that midfield and um, Solskjaer is still orchestrating on bringing a couple of new additions in that midfield. You know this you know discarding uh you know regardless sorry um of what happens uh, with Paul Pogba. So Bruno Fernandes moving to Manchester United is not dependent on what happens with Paul Pogba. Uh, maybe with, with with the military savage uh, situation. You know, he's moved to Manchester United. He's dependent on, you know, what happens uh, with Paul Pogba. Uh, but like I said, Bruno Fernandes to Manchester United now is uh, looking uh, very, very um, imminent um, indeed. We spent £68 million on Daniel James and Dan Wan-Bissaka. So when we do get Bruno Fernandes in, that's going to take our spending um, up to around um, £130 million or something um, like that anywhere. Because obviously, you know, reports have been emerged out in the last couple of days saying Manchester United have reached a transfer agreement with Sporting Lisbon for Bruno Fernandes. And it reportedly says we've agreed a fee of around £62 or £63 million. Reports indicated out of the weekend saying that, you know, Bruno Fernandes uh, was set to fly uh, to the UK to obviously you not know, undergo his medical uh, with Manchester United ahead of his uh, proposed uh, move uh, to Old Trafford. Now, potentially, um, as I updated on my previous video today, it basically uh, said uh, yesterday, um, during uh, uh, Sporting Lisbon's 2-1 uh, defeat to Valencia um, in pre-season, uh, I do believe that Bruno Fernandes had came off, uh, you know, crying and all that. So, basically, he had uh, came off uh, crying and um, that may be, that, that is the indication maybe saying that, you know, he's leaving in sport in Lisbon that game yesterday was his farewell appearance ever sport in Lisbon and that of course um, is on his own way uh, to Manchester United so basically Bruno Fernandes' emotion, emotional uh, reaction has obviously you know, put Manchester United fans um, into meltdown because why Why oh, otherwise you know, would you want to cry um, in a pre-season game you know, as far as I'm aware you know, he hasn't lost anyone in his family then if maybe if he lost someone in his family then it would be understandable you know, to currently uh, cry or if there's some, if there's any family problems all going on with him but he had no reason to cry so basically I think you know, he's on his way to Manchester United now um, is uh, Bruno Fernandes and they did lose 2-1 by the way did Sport and Lisbon but um, I read in the media and you know it basically said you know Bruno Fernandes you know came off uh, crying and all that um but um, yeah, it's looking likely now anyway he's on his uh, way uh, to Manchester United, you know, which is uh, very, very good news. Um, obviously, I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I think Hans Demir the other day, um, has revealed where he wants to play Bruno Fernandes and reportedly wants to play him as a number 10 because maybe he thinks Bruno Fernandes, you know, will be uh, more um, effective um, in that number 10 role if we put him uh, there. Um, we we'll, may, may utilise him there better and, you know, I think, you know, obviously that number 10 role is obviously you know, just behind uh, the centre uh, forward and um, but yeah I'm glad we're going to get this deal um, over the line anyway uh, for Bruno Fernandes because obviously you know he's we've been relentlessly linked with the player you know he's been linked with Manchester United all summer you know we've been in talks over Sporting and he's been there for quite some time over uh, getting him um, a deal um, over the line um, I do, and I do believe you know for, for quite why, why initially you know we haven't got a deal over the line there for a long time. I know we have now, according to the reports. But, you know, I think for the majority of the summer, it's sort of Lisbon's valuation is actually, you know, seen to be a stumbling block. Because, obviously, Sport and Lisbon did initially value him at around £70 million. Pounds. At one point, you know, we were only willing to pay up to around £50 million pounds for his services. But there were some reports indicating out the other week, uh, saying that, you know, allegedly, you know, we were never in for him. You know, it did reportedly say we believe that, you know, the majority of the speculation about Bruno Fernandes was actually, you know, coming from Portugal, his homeland, uh, rather than Manchester. Um, and 
and basically, you know, he, the sport has been boss. You know, he's uh, had a, he's talk, spoken about you know the speculation about Bruno Fernandes. You know, quite recently, you know, he said that you know Bruno Fernandes, you know, could leave Sport and Lisbon. Like he said, he basically hopes that he can keep Bruno Fernandes at Sport and Lisbon because obviously Sport and Lisbon not much of imperative players. But he initially said to the boss of Sport and Lisbon that Bruno Fernandes' future um, is still um, up um, in the air. He did say you know it would find it you know they would find it hard to find um, an adequate uh, replacement uh, for uh, Bruno Fernandes. But he did initially say throughout the course of the summer as he's been analysing at the Boston Sporting Lisbon that clubs of course have been uh, keen um, on signing uh, the player but you know we've been regarded as a favourite to sp uh, sign Bruno Fernandes um, at least uh, for the last uh, couple of weeks now according to a ball of the Portuguese press but Federico Veranda you know he's had his, uh, he's had quite a few bits to say on the speculation about Bruno Fernandes and you know he basically uh, said did the boss uh, uh, did the uh, president um, of Sporting uh, Lisbon you know he revealed and inform Manchester United, you know, what type of fee would have to pay to convince Sport and Lisbon to offload him. And he did say upwards of £56 million. So he initially said £56 million, pounds, you know, wouldn't be enough, you know, to convince Bruno at Sport and Lisbon to offload him. So that came out um, about that uh, last week. But like I said, you know, Bruno Fernandes was talking to his representatives before about a potential move to Manchester United. And I do believe his first choice preference, you know, um, actually, you know, is Manchester United. Um, is, uh, Manchester United um, is uh, Bruno Fernandes. So he wants to leave Sport and Lisbon, I think. You know, he wants to come to Manchester United because obviously, you know, he wants to relish this opportunity and, you know, you know, obviously, you know, wants to rejuvenate his career and take his footballing career to the next level because Bruno Fernandes is, you know, a player of his calibre and level. You know, he's not going to want to, you know, spend years with Sporting Lisbon or spend the rest of his career with Sporting Lisbon. He's, obviously, he's going to want to, you know, move on. He's uh, Bruno Fernandes. And I know he hasn't really got the experience of playing to the highest level, as we all do know that. I think he has played in the Champions League, but he doesn't really know much about the Champions League because he hasn't played in the Champions League game as much. Um... But, um, yeah, I think he'll be a fantastic signing for Manchester United. You know, he'll bring us them goals that we need in that midfield. You know, he'll rejuvenate uh, the team. Um, you know, I think he'll blend in very, very well um, in, that, um, in our uh, current uh, midfield. Uh, like I said on my last video, though, uh, I would be just sceptical of just one, you know, of Bruno Fernandes just coming in. But if Milinkovic Savage, you know, was to follow up with Bruno Fernandes, then I would be uh, more confident and our midfield would look very, really good. Because I think Bruno Fernandes and Milinkovic Savage, you know, would uh, blend in very, very well um, in our midfield. So I think one midfielder coming in would still improve us. But I think it would be better, you know, to um, add another midfielder in um, with uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes. And, um, but I do like him a lot. And last season for Sporting Lisbon, he scored 31 goals. So that's uh, very, very impressive. But he's been in, you know, Portugal uh, two years and, you know, he has turned it up well. You know, he's still got a contract with Sport and Lisbon until 2023. Did spend the majority um, of his career um, in Italy, you know, when he was younger. Yeah, he played for, he had, I think he played for San Pandavi where he did well. He had a good spell with Underneath when he was younger. I think he also had a good spell uh, with Navia. So very, very good player um, indeed, um, is uh, Bruno Fernandes. And, um, but he's a really, really good player. And um, also he's 25 years of age. So he's still got a lot of uh, development um, in him. Obviously at one point, you know, Tottenham winning for him, Liverpool were in for him, but I do believe Bruno Fernandes' um, agent has actually you know, been in the UK quite a few times, you know, to obviously you know, thrash out a deal for his client, because obviously he's looking for the best possible deal for his client. I think Bruno Fernandes' agent is actually you know, remaining um, in the UK according to Talksport anyway, you know, until the, uh, the deal uh, gets fully finalised uh, you know, for Fernandes and that. Um, but yeah, he's been uh, one of um, our priority uh, targets. But according to reports, if you do want to believe them, sometimes the media are not always right, you know, sometimes just speculating or sometimes on certain, you know, narratives, you know, they are justifying their existence. But, you know, according to them, they said a 63, 62 or £63 million pound fee has been agreed. We've agreed that we've come to an agreement now with Sport and Lisbon. He has not yet undergone, un under, he's not yet um, had his medical, but he's set to uh, undergo um, his medical um, and that uh, with Manchester United. So yesterday, looking like that, is, that was his uh, farewell um, appearance uh, for Sport and uh, Lisbon. He didn't as you say, you know, if he comes to Manchester United, we're going to give him around 100 grand a week. That's his contract and that, which of it, 100 grand a week equates around just over five, uh, I think it's around 5.5 million pounds um, a year. But um, yeah, so like I said, you know, Sport and Lisbon, you know, haven't been that reliable anywhere. They haven't been really reliable because obviously they assured he was going to be going to Manchester City um, a couple of months back, but obviously his move to Manchester City never materialised because obviously, you know, Manchester City um, had withdrawn uh, their interest. And um, But like I said, Liverpool and Tottenham, you know, went through quite a few times. Liverpool and Tottenham had also held negotiations uh, with his agent. Uh, but yeah, it's looking like he's going to be our uh, third sign this summer. Then I do believe Solskjaer will be working on trying to get a deal over the line from Linkage Savage. I will also try to work on getting a deal um, over the line uh, for Harry uh, Maguire. Um, uh, that right win, um, I do think we need a bit more experience um, added um, in our um, attack of our line. Um, I don't think, to be quite honest with you guys, that we're going to get a right win. I mean, I'm very sceptical about that happening. I know we've been in for quite a few winners, you know, Bale, I think Bale's going to China, like I said. You know, Nicholas Pepe, you know, I can't read some reports. It's looking like, you know, he's going out to Arsenal. So I don't think we're going to get a right winner in. But um, I'd be happy if we just get, if we get a central defender in, we get two new midfielders in, you know, I will be uh, really, really um, happy um, about uh, that. Um, but Bruno Fernandes, I think he's moved 
against Manchester United now. You know, he's uh, currently not going to um, happen. So that's good business for Manchester United. Uh, with a Mil Milinkvich Savage, you know, I have been updating you about uh, Milinkvich uh, Savage um, on a regular uh, basis. Now, I did say he's moved to Manchester United. Um, he's probably, you know, dependent on, you know, uh, what happens uh, with Paul Pogba. Um, but, uh, you know, Milinkvich Savage, he's a really, really good player. You know, he's technically um, a very, very um, good footballer. Um, I've, I've, uh, as I updated on my v uh, previous video, it did say Manchester United um, had reached um, a verbal um, agreement with Milinkvich Savage. Um, I'm very, very adamant uh, that no fee has yet come to an agreement. I don't think Manchester United have yet put any formal offering for him uh, and all that. Um, even though it initially said uh, last week, um, according to the media, the La Repubblica, the Italian outlet, you know, they did say that Manchester United um, had agreed around the £67 million uh, fee, you know, with uh, Lazio from Linkvich Savage and it said there was also add-ons included um, in the deal of around 4.4 million so the deal was worth 71 million and it also said you know he's set to sign um, or oh, we agreed a five-year deal uh, with Linkvich Savage so it says we're set to give him um, a five-year deal at Old Trafford which will take him under contract uh, with the club um, until 2024 but it said, it said last week that a fee um, and that um, had been agreed but I was recently reading the Daily Mail and they still said the fee has not yet you know come to um, an agreement reportedly at the moment we're willing to offer around 72 million pounds for Linkvich Savage reportedly you know we're around £18 million short of Lazio's valuation because I do believe Lazio um, are looking for somewhere um, in the region of around uh, £90 million. Pounds. I don't think Manchester United um, are willing to pay this. Well, unless we can sell Paul Pobber, then I think maybe then we would be intent on pay, uh, you know, paying what Lazio um, and that, um, are demanding. But reportedly, they want around uh, £90 million. Uh, pounds. But I do believe, you know, Linkin Fitz Savage's um, agent had arrived in the UK last week. Um, obviously, I do believe he's, he's obviously held talks with Manchester United, but I do believe he's yet again gone gone to London, you know, to um, hold a uh, more uh, further uh, talks uh, with Manchester United. Uh, obviously, you know, he wants to flash out uh, a deal uh, for his client uh, to join uh, Manchester United because I think, you know, Man United have come to an agreement with his agent, you know, Milling for Savage's agent. I can't remember, you know, what his name is and that, but, you know, we have come to um, an agreement uh, with his um, agent. Uh, but, you know, Allegedly, it said, you know, that Milinkovic Savage has obviously not already told his Lazio teammates, you know, that he will be uh, leaving him and that uh, this summer. Um, but, you know, the Lazio boss, you know, he's had his say on the speculation. He basically said that, you know, maybe Lazio may be forced to sell Milinkovic Savage, you know, if a suitable offer, you know, comes in for him. I think the Lazio boss is aware how much of an imperative, you know, player that Milinkovic Savage is, and he wants, you know, Milinkovic Savage to remain um, in Italy, you know, uh, with Lazio. But um, I think, you know, Lazio coming to accept the fact that Milinkovic Savage uh, does uh, currently uh, want her to leave. So, as far as I'm aware at the moment, you know, no fee um, has uh, been um, agreed. Um, obviously, we've been relentlessly linked with him anyway. You know, we was linked with him last summer um, under Jose Mino. Uh, who was linked to for uh, who was linked with um, Linkage uh, Savage? I do believe Lazio wanted over 100 million pounds uh, last summer, so this is why we didn't get him. Um but Sky in Italy, you know, reported this um, the other week about Milinkovic Savage, and you know they basically um, said, you know, Man United were orchestrating on putting a 72 million pound bid in. It also said, you know, we was uh, it also says, you know, um, we'd held, you know, we'd progressed um, in talks um, and that uh, with Lazio, but um, obviously, you know, Lazio president has confirmed they want £90 million. Um, obviously, Milinkovic Savage is 24 years of age. Like I said, he's Serbian. Um, he's primarily a central midfielder, so mainly box to box, but box to box, but can also, you know, be uh, deployed, um, deployed um, as an attack of a midfielder. Um, but he's still got a lot of years ahead of him. I think in the majority of his four years, you know, with Lazio, he has done uh, pretty uh, well. And I do believe, you know, he can produce the same element of performances, you know, if he does come to the Premier League uh, to Manchester United. United. Um, he's in with Lazio. He's scored 22 goals in 125 games in the Serie A, and I do believe in all competitions he scored 31 goals in 138 uh, games um, as a player. So he's pro he's got that proven pedigree um, as a goal scorer as um, Linkvid uh, Savage. Uh, these obviously you no know, better midfielders um, out there uh, than him, but I do think he would be the right type um, of player uh, for Manchester United. Uh, he obviously he's under contract to Lazio um, until 2023. But like I said, you know you can't put Linkvid Savage or Bruno Fernandes, Fernandes in Paul Popper's calibre at our level because like I said with Paul Pobber, you know, he's had a great start to pre-season and when Paul Pobber is on his best form, you know, he's definitely, you know, one of the uh, best uh, midfielders um, in the world and Paul Pobber, for the large portions uh, of his career with Manchester United since he rejoined in 2016, you know, he has uh, been so in inconsistent but, you know, we have uh, seen uh, the best term um, of Paul Pobber and, um, but like I said, anyway, if he does leave the football club, um, you'll probably generate over £100 million pounds for his departure and then with that money, you could probably get two or maybe even three players in but the initial plan was actually, you know, to keep Paul Pobber and bring two new still been a couple of new additions in that midfield, you know, to actually replace Herrera and Fellaini, because actually, you know, Herrera and Fellaini have obviously, you know, departed uh, the football club, you know, Fellaini left back in January, I think, you know, Herrera, you know, left uh, the other uh, month, um, left uh, the other month, so, um, yeah, so um, yeah, so there's still the news, you know, going on about Malinkvic Savage, but accordingly, reportedly, you know, we've uh, reached um, a verbal um, agreement, you know, uh, with uh, Malinkvic uh, 
Savage, so more things there, we'll definitely know and we'll update um, about that. But Bruno Fernandes will be the third, and then hopefully, you know, Malinkovic Savage, you know, can be um, our uh, fourth uh, signing. But it's dependent anyway, you know, on what happens uh, with Paul Popper. Now, um, potentially, we'll give you the news um, about uh, Harry uh, Maguire, um, as they have been um, updating you on a regular basis, because we do know Manchester United um, are in search uh, for um, a central uh, defender. Now, obviously, you know, we need someone that can go um, alongside uh, Victor Lindelof um, in our uh, back line. And, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, has identified Harry Maguire um, as his uh, number one uh, defensive target. And I think he wants to partner Victor Lindelof, uh, Harry Maguire up alongside Victor Lindelof in our back line. I do believe Victor Lindelof himself um, is excited um, about the prospect, you know, um, of, you know, Harry Maguire, you know, playing um, alongside alongside um, him um, in our uh, back line. So now reportedly, like I said earlier in the video, we are ready to sign, we are ready to complete the signing of Harry Maguire and we are willing to pay up to £80 million pounds as long as you know we can uh, sell uh, Romelu Lukaku. So maybe Lukaku is dependent on you know whether we whether you know we get Harry Maguire um, or not basically because we're only willing to pay the £80 million pounds what Leicester are demanding of course if we can sell uh, Romelu Lukaku and all that. But you know um, we've been in talks uh, with Leicester for quite some time um, over coming to um, an agreement on a deal you know for Harry Maguire. Obviously you know Leicester have basically you know from joy to the window I've basically you know been playing hardball and um, obviously you know Leicester are under no financial pressure you know to sell a Harry Maguire because you know Leicester do know how much um, imperative a player um, he's um, and all that but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has obviously instructed Ed Woodward you know to get the deal uh, completed for him They've instru he's instructed Ed Woodward to get the deal uh, completed for him and I do believe this is following uh, the serious knee injury uh, that Eric Bay um, had sustained because um, he's probably now um, out of favour with Manchester United uh, but Leicester have said you know basically you know they want uh, £80 million pounds, want a world record fee for him, uh, we're not intending on overspending him on our transfer tags, but Harry Maguire wants to leave Leicester anywhere, because the other week he informed Brendan Rodgers, he also informed his Leicester teammates that he does want to leave Leicester and he wants, you know, to uh, obviously rejuvenate his career and take his footballing career to the next level, and I think he wants to come to Manchester United and obviously, you know, Harry Maguire, you know, wants to uh, relish uh, this um, opportunity, because obviously a player of Harry Maguire's calibre and level, you know, he's not going to want to stay with Leicester, he's not going to want to spend the rest of his career with Leicester, is he? You know, he's uh, Harry uh, Maguire, you know, he's going to want to go to a, a competitive elite uh, level of football club and we do know it's been Man United and Man City battling out for his services you know I, I thought the other week a couple of weeks ago now it was maybe two or three weeks ago I thought he was going to be going to Manchester City because his, initially his first choice preference was Manchester City over Manchester United uh, obviously you know City were seeing him um, as a replacement uh, for uh, Vincent uh, Company and obviously they want to put someone in their back line alongside John Stones and you know um, John Stones um, and um, or oh, Mendy um, and all that they were Manchester City and Lippard uh, but I think there was rumours saying City could um, offload or Mendy or they already offloaded or not Mendy I'm not uh, too sure but there was rumours going on about it uh, quite uh, some time but, but now they probably won't get Harry Maguire, so maybe, maybe they now may consider uh, keeping um, Otamendi in um, anywhere. Uh, but City, looking like they were going to get him, but obviously, you know, City um, are not willing to pay what Leicester are demanding because Leicester, you know, want 80 million. You know, City, I think, are only willing to pay in the access um, around uh, 65 uh, million pounds. But, you know, like I said, City have, also, have, been, have held several talks there with Leicester. You know, we've held uh, several uh, talks there with Leicester. Don't forget, you know, we've already had a 70 million pound bid uh, turned down for him because obviously that was uh, too um, insufficient uh, for uh, Leicester. But yes, there's confirmed the one 80 million pounds. Pounds, you know, some reports have said, you know, Leicester, you know, want 90 million pounds or the value meant 90 million pounds, but you know, Man United won't pay 90 million pounds because that's way uh, too um, extortion uh, for uh, Harry uh, Maguire. You know, you can't put Harry Maguire in Virgil van Dyke's caliber um, or level, you just can't do it because Virgil van Dyke is definitely, you know, regarded as the best center, central defender um, in the world. You know, he's the most expensive defender in world football at the moment because obviously Liverpool paid around 75 uh, million pounds for him and he's done really, really well um, at Liverpool. Liverpool have actually, you know, had a bad start uh, to uh, pre season, so maybe they won't have a good season in the Premier League this season like you know like they did uh, last season because they had a good season last season in the Premier League you know Liverpool have you know invested well um, in the last uh, couple of uh, seasons um But um, like I said um, about uh, Harry uh, Maguire, um, I'd love him uh, to come to uh, Manchester United. But we've got to get a central defender in because, you know, we've got issues uh, defensively. You know, it's proven last season we conceded 54 goals in 38 Premier League games, our highest total in, what, 40 years? So that just indicates out, you know, the issues we've got defensively. And um, obviously, I don't think we've had a world-class central defender, you know, since we had the likes of Vidic and since uh, we had the likes um, of Ferdinand. And, um, but yeah, I think we are, I still think we can get this deal um, on the line uh, for uh, Harry uh, Maguire. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has identified him 
um, is his uh, number one uh, defensive uh, target. Um, but yeah, Leicester do want around uh, £80 million. Uh, pounds. I do believe Harry Maguire um, has demanded that he does want to become captain of Manchester United um, if, he's moved, if he's moved to Old Trafford um, at Taylor. So maybe Manchester United you know, may consider you know, currently uh, giving him, the, give, giving him uh, the captaincy. But like I said with Harry Maguire, you know, 26 years of age, you know, still uh, got him a lot of uh, years ahead of him. Um, well, Premier League proven, as you all know, is Harry Maguire, which is uh, also you know, very, very uh, beneficial. That's beneficial for Manchester United that is a Premier League proven. I think he's been in the Premier League quite a few years now. You know, in his two years with Leicester, you know, he's made 76 appearances in all competitions. 69 of those appearances have come um, in the Premier League. You know, he signed a new long-term contract with Leicester last summer, so he's under contract with them until 2023. Reads reports um, actually indicated out saying that, you know, Leicester want a higher transfer fee um, up front because actually, you know, Leicester don't think we'll qualify for the Champions League next season. And actually, you know, we failed to qualify for the Champions League uh, three times out of the six seasons, you know, since Alex Ferguson uh, retired. So Leicester are skeptical that will qualify for the Champions League next season so they want a higher transfer fee um, up front uh, reportedly so far we're willing to offer 72 million up front with additional bonus payments uh, that are set to be uh, paid um, if obviously you know we secure Champions League qualification uh, for next season so initially we've offered 72 million you know with the potential possible add-ons due it obviously you know if we uh, you know meet certain you know um, stuff if we meet certain if we you know qualify for the Champions League uh, for next season basically um but yeah, you know, Leicester will want um, a higher uh, transfer fee um, up front. But Leicester will make a huge profit on the player anyway if they get £80 million. You know, they only paid around, what, £17 million from, from Hull City um, a couple of uh, years ago. Um, but I think Mike Feeling's keen on reuniting with the player. Don't forget Mike Feeling, you know, uh, manager uh, Harry Maguire, you know, during um, his uh, short uh, tenure with Hull. Uh, but he's 26 and I think he's got all the attributes to come and succeed at Manchester United. He's not very fast, Harry Maguire, but, you know, I don't think uh, that's uh, currently um, an issue. So he's going to be the central defender that Man United will, he's, will probably, you know, be in but we've, there's obviously been a lot of other central defenders on our agenda you know there's still people you know talking about so about the rail from Tottenham you know there's still people you know to on about Killer Barley, you know, Killer Barley. I thought there was a lot of contradictions to the stories about Killer Barley, and he's not going to be coming to Manchester United. I said the only way we'd get him is if he was willing to pay a silly amount of money. He probably he would cost more than Harry Maguire, maybe not much more, but would cost more than Harry Maguire. Uh, but yeah, with Killer Barley, nice, you know, he's going to be a staying um, at Napoli. Uh, Rafael Varane, you know, was in for him at one point, but obviously, you know, he's he's staying um, at Real Madrid. You know, the late now is out of the equation because he's staying, he's gone to a Juventus. Um, you know, there's been so many central defenders um, on our uh, current um, agenda, but you know, wanted to get a central defender last summer but reflecting back last summer you know the board weren't back in the signings there that Jose Mourinho I wanted to recommend in there to the football club and um, but like I said Leicester have been playing hardball with Harry Maguire but no fee has yet you know come to an agreement on two occasions said allegedly Man United had agreed a world record fee of £80 million with Leicester for Harry Maguire but it got proven to be a load of nonsense so them stories that came out saying that we had agreed a fee and that um, obviously you know they're, them stories there were very very um, cynical so no fee has yet come to an agreement we can sell Lukaku to Inter Milan then we generate the funds for his departure. Then I think we're going to pay the eighty million pounds that Leicester, you know, do uh, currently uh, want. But I think him and Vin Vittel and Luffy in our backline would be fantastic. But you know, we've got a lot of central defenders. You know, we've got Eric Bay. We've got Rojo, um, we've got um, Eric Bay, Rojo, Smalling, Jones, Victor Lindelof and all that to Anzebe. So we've got about five um, or six uh, central uh, defenders. Um, but we've got a hell of a lot of uh, central defenders. But I think, we need, I think we're orchestrating on selling one anywhere if Harry Maguire does come in. And I think we need to sell Rojo. We also need to sell Damien because obviously, you know, both players have enjoyed their difficult times um, at the football club. You know, with Damien, um, you know, he hasn't really been given a chance. Obviously, like I said, hasn't travelled with a squad uh, in, to Oslo. Um, you know, with Rojo, his Manchester United career has been mainly affected with the amount of um, injuries um, he has uh, currently uh, sustained. I think we've put around a £20 million valuation on Rojo, but no team um, has come up uh, yet uh, with an offer. Um, but I did initially say we've definitely not got to work in the SL uh, players. But with the news about Romelu Lukaku, um, as I do, you know, keep uh, currently um, updating uh, you guys on. Um, obviously, we do know for the entirety of the summer, you know, he's been relentlessly linked to a move to Inter Milan. You know, Lukaku um, has spoken um, about his proposed uh, move uh, to Inter Milan uh, for the majority of um, the summer. And we do know Inter Milan um, have held uh, quite a few uh, talks um, that with Manchester United. Um, obviously, I do believe Lukaku's agent, Federico Pastorella, has held quite um, a few uh, talks uh, with Inter Milan. So, potentially, I think he was, he was actually in Milan last week, um, if I'm right, you know, was Federico Pastorella, because he gave us an update a couple of weeks ago and he said you know that in some land um, are desperate to sign uh, Ron uh, Lukaku so potentially we do know anywhere now he's um, surplus uh, two requirements um, at Manchester United um, obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer spoke to Lukaku um, was it the other week or a couple of weeks ago and you know he wanted him to stay at the club for more season did Solskjaer but Lukaku has confirmed he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, the football club because uh, obviously surplus two requirements and obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first choice preference is Marcus Rashford ahead of uh, Lukaku and obviously now we've got the likes of Greenwood in our attacking line Chong in our attacking line 
line, Daniel James in our attack of line, Marshall in our attack of line, and Lukaku, of course, is going to find it hard that, to get in the mix, of course, so he's going to find game time very, very difficult. So I think it would be very beneficial if Manchester United can sell him, and it'll, it'll be also a very, very uh, beneficial uh, for uh, the player um, himself. Uh, Inter Milan director who travelled there to the UK a couple of weeks ago, you know, to obviously, you know, uh, hold uh, talks uh, with Manchester United. Um, obviously, you know, Inter Milan have had a £54 million pound bid already turned down, because obviously that £54 million pound figure is too insufficient, because, you know, we said we want around 75 or £80 million. Pounds. So basically, you know, we're looking to recoup the money that we did pay. Uh, we're looking to recoup the money. Uh, we're looking to we'll recoup the money that we did pay for Lukaku um, a couple of uh, years ago uh, from Everton, or maybe even orchestrating on gaining a little bit of a profit. But we do want around 75 or £80 million. Pounds. Obviously, you know, Inter Milan are struggling to meet uh, this valuation. I do believe our valuation has seen to be the stumbling block of Lukaku making his proposed uh, move uh, to Inter Milan. You know, Inter Milan, I do believe, are under financial fair play restrictions. I also believe Inter Milan have been trying to offload a couple of their players to help them generate funds to meet that 75 or £80 million pound valuation, but obviously it hasn't worked out for them. We're unwilling to accept, accept swap deals that Inter Milan um, have currently um, offered us. Um, but um, yeah, obviously, you know, um, Antonio Conte has identified, you know, Romelu Lukaku um, is his uh, number one uh, target. Obviously, reflected back a couple of years ago, you know, when Antonio Conte, you know, was uh, the manager um, of Chelsea, um, was uh, the manager um, of Chelsea. Obviously, at that point, he wanted Romelu Lukaku, but obviously, you know, he ended up making the move to Manchester United. And obviously, Lukaku did describe Antonio Conte as the best manager in the world. So I do believe Lukaku is actually you no know, keen on uh, playing um, under um, his current uh, guidance. Um... But um yeah, I think Inter Milan have also also before you know inquired about getting Romelu Lukaku um, on a two year loan with around nine million up front with them the obligation to buy for the further fifty four million in the end of the loan. But again, Manchester United didn't entertain this offer because we're only willing to let Lukaku go um, on a permanent uh, deal. But I do believe if we sell him, it'll help us with our rebuilding process. It'll also you know um help us out with our uh, transition. So I think we definitely you know need to uh, get him um, out um the football club. Um, It initially said, actually, um, he initially said, uh, uh, was it over a month ago now, saying that Lukaku had agreed the personal terms of Inter Milan. You know, he also said he agreed a contract with them with around 180 grand a week. But obviously, you no, know, no fee um, has yet, you know, come to him um, an agreement. So, Inter Milan have been linked to him for a long time. Also, now, uh, Juventus have come into the equation because, obviously, you know, they've entered the base now uh, for Ramon Lukaku. You know, I've been reading recent reports about that and it says, you know, Juventus are, are reportedly willing to offer Paul Dybala in a swap deal for Ramon Lukaku. And I would take that with a pinch of salt, definitely. I think, you know, Dybala coming to Manchester United as, as part of a deal of Lukaku going to, you know, Juventus, you know, would be um, absolutely uh, fantastic. Uh, with Lukaku, I think he was talking about, you know, Juventus a while back, and I think his preference at one point was Juventus, because I think, you know, maybe Juventus can guarantee him success. Um, obviously, you know, like the likes of Inter Milan maybe wouldn't be able to guarantee him uh, success. So I think he'd be more of a standout player at Juventus, and I think Lukaku, you know, is actually was excited about the prospect, you know, of playing alongside uh, Cristiano Ronaldo um, in the Juventus uh, team. Uh, but yeah, they're probably the willing to offer that... The, Dybala as part of the deal. I was reading recent reports and it actually said that we've actually asked for Douglas Costa as part of the deal uh, for uh, Romelu Lukaku. But I'd actually, my own, my own preference, I'd prefer, um, you know, Dybala, to be uh, quite honest with you. You know, obviously, you know, there's been a lot of talks going on about uh, Paulo uh, Dybala. Um, obviously, I think Tottenham have been in for him. You know, Tottenham are orchestrating on putting him alongside, alongside Kane in their uh, team. Tottenham have done transfer activity this summer. You know, they've got Tanguan and Umbelli on the board. This must their transfer record for him. They've got Jack Clark from Leeds. He's been loaned back to Leeds uh, for their next season. But Tottenham are still looking to do more transfer activity and Tottenham have been in talks with Juventus over and getting um, a deal um, more line for Paul Dybala you know I, think, I do believe Paul Dybala has changed his transfer stance now he's considering leaving Juventus because at one point he was reluctant to leave Juventus but I do believe Dybala's held their uh, talks over Mitsuo uh, Sarri now he's considering leaving Juventus but this, this, disregarding Paul Dybala as being part of any swap deal disregarding him as, as being part of um, any swap deal you know Paul Dybala um, would probably cost you from between maybe seventy eight or ninety million pounds because Juventus has confirmed this uh, quite recently. Um, if you know if the they've agreed to sell the bar, they would they would be willing to sell the bar, like, You know as long as you know we were willing to meet their valuation. So like I said, this can't be part of any swap deal. You know you know we'd probably it'd be it, our move for the bar would be dependent on you know if we could sell Pogba and uh, Romelu Lukaku. But yes, Manchester United have been in for the bar, You know quite um, a few times. You know I believe it or not. You know he's been at Juventus four years and the majority of his four years he's done well with Juventus. He enjoyed the Difficult time last season, obviously, you no, know, because obviously, since we are rival of Ronaldo, he's found you know game time very, very difficult. And say so to uh, Douglas uh, Costa, as and um, 
you know, Juventus may be willing to offload a couple of their players anyway, you know, to help them generate funds because they have done good business this summer. You know, they spent an extortion amount uh, last summer um, on uh, Cristiano and Ronaldo. Um, but like I said, Paul Dybala, you know, in the majority of his four years, he's done well. You know, he can play as a forward. He can play as an attacking midfielder. I think in his four years with Juventus, you know, he scored 78 goals in 182 appearances. Um, as Dybala, you know, he's won four Series and three Coppa Italians. I think he's been named in, in the Serie A team of the year on uh, three um, occasions as Dybala as well. And, um, um, and I think Juventus paid around, was it, €40 million Euros for him from Palmo, you know, back in uh, 2015. But yeah, recent reports have come in now saying that, you know, Juventus have entered the race for uh, Lukaku. But what I actually know we're demanding could be the stumbling block of Lukaku making his move to Juventus um, or in some land. But Juventus are looking to uh, offer the Barla as part of the deal so he can try and obviously convince us, you know, to lower um, our valuation. Um, but yeah, well, Lukaku has been at the club two years. You know, he's you know in his first season he did really really well. Well, he was actually exceptional in his first season, should I say, with Manchester United. But didn't really replicate that in his second season. And you know, he scored forty two goals in ninety six games for the club in all competitions. Of Lukaku, you know, he's still got uh, three years uh, left on his contract. Don't get me wrong, I'll credit Lukaku. His goal scoring pedigree in the Premier League uh, is absolutely uh, fantastic. Uh, his goal scoring pedigree in the Premier League is absolutely uh, fantastic. You know, he's scored a hell of a lot of goals um, in the Premier League, and he's obviously you now well uh, Premier League proven. And he's still what twenty six years of age, Lukaku, when he's Still, I uh, got him um, a lot of uh, years ahead of him, but I think we've actually not imposed a deadline, you know, for the Kaku's transfer to Inter Milan. So reportedly, we've give we're giving Inter Milan um, a certain amount of time, you know, to uh, meet our seventy five million pound asking price. So we'll get Harry Maguire in if we can sell the Kaku, generate the funds that we do want. Then I think we're going to pay the eighty million pounds that Leicester are demanding uh, for uh, Harry uh, Maguire. <laughs> But yeah, there's been quite a few names mentioned anyway, you know, who could uh, replace uh, Ronald Lukaku at the football club. Um, obviously, there's been recent talks going on about Moussa Dembele uh, from Lyon. And with Moussa Dembele, look, he's an out-and-out -out number nine, so I think he would be good adequate with players for Lukaku. Um, obviously, um, he hasn't played... Uh, wow, well, yeah, sorry, he has played in the Premier League because obviously, you know, yeah, he began his uh, senior uh, career uh, with Fulham. Uh, Moussa Dembele, uh, it was his debut season last season for Lyon because it was his first season with Lyon uh, last season. I think he scored 20 goals in 46 games in all competitions. So his stats were very impressive last season. You know he's got four years left on his contract with Leon. You know he's but he's 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 had impressive spells. You know with the likes of Celtic and Fulham. He had two good years um, in Scotland there with Celtic. Did Moose Dembele? You know he's what 23 uh, years in the verge. He's still I think he recently turned 23. So Moose Dembele has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years ahead of him. So reportedly we've identified him as a possible uh, replacement uh, for Rob Noel Lukaku. And um, I do presume he's uh, uh, he's got that in his potential. He can score goals and that. Uh, so maybe I would like him at Manchester United. I think quite a few teams were in for him, you know, when he was a Fulham player, you know, when he was actually, you know, younger. Um, but he's been another player mentioned who could be players like Aku um, at the football club. Um, but, um, yeah... So uh, the main part of uh, this uh, current uh, video, guys, you know, was to give you this. This was obviously you know the Christian Sunder Manchester United preview. Um, obviously, uh, Oleg Solskjaer has not yet you know currently you know done um, his press conference. I, I do presume you know he will be uh, doing um, a press conference. Um, but um, yeah, and uh, like I said, fantastic start uh, to pre-season, you know, uh, five, four wins um, out of four, so hopefully we can make it five wins out of five, you know, tomorrow um, evening. It is a six o'clock kickoff, like I said, it's in Oslo, which is obviously, you know, the capital um, of Norway, isn't it? Um, um, yeah, I've given you a bit of additional information about Christian Sun. You know, they were founded back in 2003, which is around 15 years ago. Obviously, you know, the two rival clubs, Christian Sun, um, FK and Klaus Nengen, FK, you know, they um, came together to um, establish um, a new team and that. And um, yeah, so they agreed to um, to agree to a new elite team, basically. You know, did uh, Christian Sun, FK and uh, Klaus Nengen, um, FK, according to the reports I've read. And um, yeah, and you know, obviously, you know, they've... Um, They um, got promoted to the top level um, of Norwegian football in 2016. And obviously, you know, they finished seventh and fifth in their two campaigns um, in the top flight. So, yeah, there's a bit of information about Christian Sun, But they haven't played since uh, the 5th um, of July. So, they probably will be fresh. They'll definitely be fresh because I don't think they've played since, you know, the 5th um, of July. Uh, but Manchester United have named a 26-man squad uh, to go to Oslo. So, like I said, Lukaku hasn't gone. Bay is obviously, you know, injured. Damien, of course, um, hasn't gone. Um... But um yeah. So anyway guys, uh, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. Um if you do consider subscribe um, as always and take care, God bless and I'll see you all again very very soon.